If you do these things that I'm going to tell you for the next 60 days and they become habits in your life, you are going to be a totally different person. You're going to be more fulfilled. You're going to be healthier. You're going to have a better family life. Your faith is going to be stronger. It's game over if you follow this. You want to know why? Because I've been doing this for the last seven years. So I know it works. What's up, Wealth Builders? It's Ryan here with another solo podcast. It seems like this is the most popular form of podcast we have because... I always go deep into some kind of topic. Now, today's topic is going to be about building real habits that are going to actually change your life. So we're going to talk about the mentality of habits and what habits I want you to take. But also, too, I'm going to take it a step further. We are going to actually do a 60-day challenge together, which is going to do two things. Number one, I think it's going to drastically change your life for the better. And number two, I'm going to be giving away cool prizes for those who complete the challenge with me. I'm going to be doing it alongside of you. So um, it's going to be a lot of fun. So first off, before I tell you about this challenge and what it is, let's just talk about habits in general, okay? There's a lot of people who, you know, basically they live life and they just don't even realize that they have all of these bad habits that they developed over these years and um, they don't even understand why, okay? Um, There's two reasons that you need to understand habits that are really important, okay? Number one is that most habits are, you know, started from your surroundings, meaning that your circumstances are the biggest dictator of your habits, okay? So if, for instance, I have a problem eating sweets. If I have sweets all around my house, then I'm more than likely going to start eating sweets. You know, at the end of the day, if it's there for the taking and I just don't have really good willpower, I'm going to go eat the ube ice cream all the time. If it's in the freezer, I will literally eat ube ice cream every night. That's how I am because I am not that strong to give up that kind of habit. And so what happens is you start buying these sweets and now it becomes this habit and I eat ice cream every night and it's just not good, right? So how do you eliminate that habit? Well, you have to eliminate the circumstance that's causing you to create that habit, okay? So number one, it means not having sweets in the house. If I don't have the ice cream there, I won't go and eat it, okay? Now, does that mean that I'm never going to stop eating dessert? I mean, probably not because you know, in the end, I'll still go and get dessert maybe once or twice a week. It's just a big hurdle for me to go actually do it because it's not easily accessible. Okay. And so this is what I want you to realize about habits is that you're most likely going to have certain habits in your life that are dictated upon your circumstances. Um, I can't remember what book it was. It might've been Atomic Habits, which is a great book, by the way, where they talked about how um, these guys who were at Vietnam, these American soldiers, like were getting hooked on opium for like crazy rates and it was like man they they figured that all of these guys were going to come back to the states and be drug addicts and and have all this these problems and what they found was very few of them actually came back to the states and dealt with drug problems the moment they came back they basically were good you know there were still a few that that were addicted but for the most part even with one of these most addictive drugs in the world um, they really weren't addicted and so it became why why were these people able to get over it, right? And the reason was their circumstance changed. When they were in Vietnam fighting, stressed out, everyone else around them is doing drugs and all that stuff, then they were more likely to do the drugs. But the moment they came back to the States and they were totally away from all of those people in their lives um, and all they had to do was just go back to living their normal life and nobody else around them did opium, They didn't have it, you know, regularly available to them like they did in Vietnam. They just stopped doing it because the circumstance didn't really allow them to do it. And so, you know, it's just such a good reminder that if you want to kick a bad habit, just eliminate it from like being easily accessible. If you do that, then you're more than likely going to beat it. Very few people have willpower to be able to just stop temptation in front of them, right? Like, at the end of the day, you have to be very conscious of your surroundings. You know, if you're trying to get away from alcohol, do you think that if you go to the bar every night, like you're going to give yourself the best chance to stop drinking? Like, no. Okay. An alcoholic shouldn't hang out at the bar around drinks. It's just like asking for trouble. But if you just stay away from the bar, you're going to have a much better chance. Like just the best way to create a new habit is just to stay away from the old habits and don't have them anywhere close to you. Okay. Um, So, you know, this is something you got to think about. And this is the same thing for your marriage, right? If you're easily tempted in your life by, you know, the other sex, 
then you shouldn't be hanging around other people that might tempt you, right? Like, don't put yourself in those situations. Don't be going to the club and the bars and everything else. Like, that's how you get yourself in trouble. Just don't even give yourself the opportunity to be tempted, okay, for all of these bad habits, okay? Now, we are talking about just bad habits right now and circumstances and how you do that. But the same thing is true with good habits, okay? If you want to create good habits in your life, put the things you want near you in just plain sight into your routine, everything else. Okay. So for example, you know, if I want to go and, uh, create this habit of eating healthy, right. I would eliminate all of the junk food in the fridge and everything else. And I would just replace it with all the healthy food. Maybe I'll meal prep. Maybe I'll get a chef. Maybe I'll go do these things. I'm more than likely going to start eating good food. If that's all that's available to me, I have no choice, right? That, that, that's just one example. Um, another example would be, let's just say, you know, you want to start saving money better, right? This is why Dave Ramsey says, cut up your credit cards. Now, even though I'm not like a huge fan of a lot of things Dave teaches, this is like an example of that. Hey, if you don't want to, you know, go in debt and you want to start saving money, cut up your credit cards because now they're not accessible and you're going to start creating better habits because you're not going to go spend the way you used to spend. Okay. Um, if you are trying to get in better shape and start working out, Okay, how can you do this? Well, you can do things that promote working out. Maybe you get an at-home gym, so it's right there. You have no excuse. Maybe you hire a personal trainer who you got to go pay a bunch of money. Well, now you're much more likely to go show up because you've got a personal trainer and, you know, you're paying all this money. And so if you don't do it, you're going to, like, feel bad. You know, these are ways that you can create better habits by just changing the circumstances, right? We tell people this all the time in our coaching programs. I'll say, look, you know... You can try and go figure this out on your own on YouTube University, and you can learn for free. But look, you have no skin in the game. If you don't do it, you don't do it. No harm lost. And who knows how long it's going to take you. But the moment you join one of our coaching programs, your circumstance changes dramatically. And because of this, your um, likelihood of success is going to significantly increase. Not because just the knowledge you're getting is that much better, which it is. You are getting better knowledge. But what's happening behind the scenes and the habits you're creating is changing. When you're forced to go show up on these Zoom calls every week, you're now starting to create better habits and disciplines. When you're around other people in the community who are making things happen, you know, and you're seeing this every single day, you're going to be more likely to take action because now you're just getting around a different group of people, right? And when you go spend a lot of money on a coaching program like that, you now have skin in the game and you want to get an ROI, Like, are you going to be happy dropping $10,000 on something and then you don't do anything after that? No, you're going to feel some type of way, right? You are now going to be much more incentivized to take action, even if you learned nothing because the simple fact of you've got money on the line, right? This is why I've seen a lot of um, personal trainers do this kind of deal where it's like, hey, if you don't hit your goal or whatever, you're going to have to pay $1,000 or something like that, right? And it's the same principle of, Yo, when skin's in the game, you'll act different because your circumstance changed. And so I want to make this very clear that when you're trying to create a new habit, your circumstance has to change, okay? For good or bad. You're trying to kick a bad habit, get away from those bad habits. You're trying to create good habits, start putting the good things around you, right? And, And the other thing I'll say before I get into this challenge is that good habits, um, or bad habits usually are very people-based, okay? So if you are around people who are just kind of bums and whatever, and these are your friends who've been your friends since high school or whatever, they're the old buddies, ain't doing nothing with their life, do you think all of a sudden you're going to start doing something with your life because you're hanging around these schmucks? No. You got to get around new people if you want to create new habits because, you know, what's the saying? You are the the average of the five people you hang around the most. I 100% agree with that. So, you know, you hanging out with your old schmuck friends aren't going to get you to the next level with wherever you want to be. The way you get to where you want to be is you hang around with the people who are already there, right? You get new friends who are doing what you want to do because now by proximity and circumstance, you are going to start becoming like them or they're not going to allow you to be with them like for them. They will not accept you because you are not living up to the standard of that friend group, right? I hang out with a lot of entrepreneurs. I hang out, you know, with a lot of Christians. 
Um, they're all like very devoted in their own ways, right? Like I want to hang out with Christians who are very devoted to growing in their faith. I want to hang out with entrepreneurs who are very devoted into growing in their business. I don't want to hang out with people who are just like on the fence. Do you think I hang out with entrepreneurs who are like, man, I'm thinking about starting a business. I don't know if I should do it, blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, I don't hang out with those people because that would come off on me of like, man, dude, this is like draining being around this person. Okay. So I, it's like, that's not going to be my core group of friends. All right. And the same thing is true with faith and everything. It's like, do you think I'm going to go hang out with people who just don't care about growing in their faith and they're lukewarm and whatever? Like, no, it's just, I, I might try to help that person, but I, I don't want that person feeding into me for sure. Like, I'm not trying to like break bread with this person, like on a weekly basis and like thinking that they're going to help me iron sharpen iron. It's like that, that's a one way relationship, which is fine to a degree but you got to have other people who are helping build you up too. It's not just you helping other people all the time. Your cup has to be filled in order to fill other people's cups. So make sure you understand that. Um, so yeah, you know, your, your circumstance has to change and it usually depends with people. Okay. At the end of the day, um, the people you hang around with are going to dictate probably the person that you become. Hey, if you're looking to grow your real estate investing business, whether you're just getting started trying to get your first deal or you're trying to scale and get to the next level, you need to join us at Wealthy Investor. We've got events every single quarter that are absolutely crazy. We've got online coaching programs where we have Zoom calls, a community every single week. We give you everything you need to know to start your business, scripts, processes, SOPs, all of it. It's for you so that you can dominate. So if you wanna learn more about how to join our community and be mentored by me and some of our top coaches and be around other students who are absolutely crushing it, go to wealthyinvestor.com, apply for a free call with my team. Once again, wealthyinvestor.com, apply for a call today. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, the smartest business decision I've ever made was creating content. Ever since then, my businesses have skyrocketed, not only because we get a lot of views and we're able to turn those views into leads, which then turn into dollars, but it's also led to a ton of different business opportunities, investors, and also it's allowed me to hire A-plus employees, all because I made the decision to create content. Now, here's the thing, most people have no idea where to begin. That changes with Wealthy Creator. Wealthy Creator is my coaching program for entrepreneurs who want to grow their personal brand on social media. And if you're listening to this, that's probably you. You probably realize you should be creating a podcast just like this one and developing your personal brand. We can help you. We have coaching programs, mentorships. In fact, we can even edit your content for you and run your social media account. It's absolutely crazy. So if you wanna learn more about it, go to wealthycreator.io. You can book a free call with my team. So once again, that's wealthycreator.io. Start creating content today, building that brand, and I promise you it'll be the best investment you ever make. So um, that is what I need you to understand about habits and you know really how important the circumstance is. The other thing to think about too is like habits, once formed, are unconscious, meaning you just do them, okay? You stop thinking about them, it just becomes what they call a habit. Um, I, I was reading a book about this. It might've been Atomic Habits again. There's, there's a bunch of books on creating habits. Um, uh, I forget what the one, The Compound Effect. That, that's another good book about creating habits. But uh, basically they talk about how your brain processes so much information every single day that there's no way um, you could just think about everything you do. If you did, like it would just be so tiresome. And so what happens is, your brain just starts creating these habits and things so that you can kind of operate on autopilot, you know? And so we do this in everyday life, you know, when we're driving, um, most of us just kind of drive on autopilot mentally, uh, not Tesla's autopilot. Some, some do that too. But for the most part, like if you asked me how I got to work today, I, I don't really remember it. I was just kind of operating out of habit, you know, reacting to the road and like, it's kind of mindless. The same is true for many of the things that you do, Right. When you brush your teeth, I'm not actively thinking like, man, got to make sure I get to the back of my teeth and got to get the front and all this stuff. Like, no, it just happens naturally. I don't think about it. It's mindless. Um, you know, when I was in sports, whether it's playing baseball or golf or whatever, you know, the best athletes don't think about the process of doing whatever it is they're doing. I don't think about throwing the ball 
or hitting or anything. I'm just reacting. It's a habit that I've built over time. Now, when I had to learn the habit, absolutely, I had to be very intentional and mindful and everything. But over time, once you get enough reps, you don't have to think about it. Steph Curry ain't thinking about his jump shot when he's playing. He just does it, right? He's reacting. It's become a habit. You know, when you actually start thinking about these things is when you screw up. <laughs> it's when you get the yips. It's when you, you know, mess up your form because supreme athletes who have spent thousands and thousands of hours doing the same thing over and over again don't even know how to think about it because it just happens naturally. So what we want to realize is we can create good habits that we don't even have to think about or try. They will just happen once we develop them. And, you know, yeah, we got to be mindful and intentional about it in the beginning, but over time you just do. You know, when I think about my morning routine, I've talked about it a lot and I've been posting more about it on Instagram and people have really enjoyed it. Like if, you, if you're not following me on Instagram, basically every morning now you will see me reading my Bible, eating some eggs that are perfectly poached. Everyone wants to know how these eggs are so circular and perfect. By the way, it's an Amazon. It's a pan you can get on Amazon. Go check it out. Uh, maybe we'll link to it if the team can find it. But, um, you know, they'll see that. And then I do it like now I just do a morning devotional where I just kind of whatever I'm feeling like uh, saying during that. And it's, that's now become a habit for me where I just post that every morning. But the thing is, before I started posting about it, I've been doing that for the last, I started this in 2016. So almost seven years, I've spent every single morning in my life, reading my Bible, praying, journaling. Like I have the journals, I have everything, right? And by the way, we're going to get to how you can do this too. Um, and so I've created this habit where I don't have to think about it. I don't have to like force myself to do it. I just do. It's a habit. It comes naturally. I, it's just, I know every time I wake up, this is what I got to do. And I know that, Hey, I got to set my alarm and wake up early so that I can fit this hour into my morning before I got to go do whatever it is I got to do that morning. Right? So that that's become a habit set in stone. Same thing is true with working out. I don't have to like force myself to work out. It's like, it doesn't matter to me that I may not feel good or whatever the case is. I know today's Monday. I work out at 7 a.m. It's what I do. It's never going to change. I'm never going to just sit at home and be like, man, I don't really feel like it today. I'm not going to do it. That, that doesn't happen. The only way it doesn't happen is literally it's logistical. <laughs> I'm in another city for whatever reason, something is going on and I just for whatever reason, can't do it. I'm not saying I'm 1000% perfect with, Hey, I don't ever miss a workout no matter what. Right. There are times where I'll miss it because something of higher priority supersedes it, but it's never because I don't want to do it or I'm lazy. That doesn't ever happen. That's never happened once in the last, I literally can't remember 10 years because it's a habit. I just do it. Um, and the thing is too, you know, workout partner wise and stuff like that. Do you think I, I work out with people that, you know, I got to like motivate them. Like, come on, dude, let's go to the gym. It's like, nah, dude, if you ain't about this, you can't work out with me, right? Show up or don't. So, you know, gym has been something that's become a habit of mine. Um, ever since I got into social media content, I made it a habit of mine of filming every Monday, trying to just get every YouTube video done that I can. And that, that the team knows that the team will tell you in the last three years, if I said I was going to film a video, I never not film the video. It didn't, matter like how I felt that day. It didn't matter, you know, if anything, what it was going on in my home life, it doesn't matter what's happening in business. I'm going to film the videos because that's the habit that I've created and I just do it. And that's what leads to success and consistency. If I know, I know if I do my morning routine for seven years straight, I know what the result ends up being. I get spiritually filled. I become better. I have more gratitude. I have a better outlook on my day. I already know the result and I'm going to continue to do that. If I work out, I know the result. It's very consistent. I've been literally the same weight for the last 12 years. I've been plus or minus five pounds from 180 pounds for the last 12 years. Okay. That's because the habit has been formed on how I eat, how I work out, everything else. And the same is true with content. The reason my social media has continued to grow, you know, just consistently day after day because I put in the work every single Monday and do what I got to do. Okay. That's the power of habits. And I want you to realize that because you may have bad habits today, 
But I can promise you, changing your habits is not that hard to do. And once you get it established, it's there. Okay? Doesn't happen overnight. Okay? They say that a habit can be formed at a minimum, like they say 60 days is like how long it takes for a habit to form. Um, you know, there's other things that's like, oh, do it in 30 days, do it in 90 days, whatever, right? Google says 60. And so that's what I have determined is the right amount of days um, to do something. You know, I was actually reading this verse in the Bible, or not this verse, but like a sermon about how 40 was a very significant number in the Bible. You know, Jesus spent 40 days on a fast. You know, Israelites spent 40 days in the wilderness. There were other you know, times where 40 was a very significant number. I was like, man, maybe I should have changed it to 40 days. But nonetheless, it's a 60 day deal. And um, let me tell you, if you do these things that I'm going to tell you for the next 60 days and they become habits in your life, you are going to be um, a totally different person. You're going to be more fulfilled. You're going to be healthier. You're going to have a better family life. Your faith is going to be stronger. It's game over. If you follow this, you want to know why? because I've been doing this for the last seven years. So I know it works. And so I've created it based on my life and what I know has led me to having contentment and success. And I know you can do it too. Okay. So what is this 60 day habit filming or habit forming thing that I'm talking about? Well, I call it the wealthy way 60. Okay. This is our wealthy way 60 day challenge. I created this last year and a bunch of people went through it and had amazing results. Okay. Um, I have not talked about it really since then because I've been busy building out the wealthy way and everything that you see today with the podcast and, you know, the courses and everything, the rebrand into everything wealthy. But we now have a way to make this challenge very easy and um, trackable for you. So um, if you didn't know, okay, we created a mobile app. It's on Google for all you Android people and it's on Apple for all the smarter people in the world. Okay. So. What you can do is download the app for free on either of those, okay? Um, Now, with the app, it has everything um, in the Wealthy ecosystem, okay? So you can go directly to the courses that are free, go get the Wealthy Way book. Um, You can go join the Facebook group for free and um, the content, the podcast like this, you know, there's links to it all in the app. So if you're dialed into everything in the Wealthy community, then this app is perfect for you, right? Um, and this is going to be my big push to get people on the app because it's life changing. I spent so much money <laughs> to develop this app and everything else. I mean, six figures plus, and it's not really like a way to monetize it. It's just like, I built it mainly for me and to, to help people just emulate this and live the wealthy way. Okay. But, uh, once you download the app, it'll take you through a tutorial of how to set it up, set your wealthy way goals, um, how to create new daily habits in your life that you can set as custom and it's just a really good thing. So I'm not going to go over that today. I want to more so jump into this challenge and why it's super important and why we're doing what we're doing. Okay. So here's what the wealthy way 60 day challenge is. Okay. Um, it takes about two hours, um, a day. So if you can commit to two hours a day doing this, your life will be drastically different. So here are the six things you need to do that totals two hours a day. And within the app, you can start the challenge and check them off as you do them throughout the day to give yourself um, you know, credit for it. Okay, And this is how we're also going to track who finishes this challenge and gets the prizes at the end. All right? So here are the six things you got to do every day. Okay, Number one, you need to pray or meditate for 10 minutes a day. All right? So if you're a believer, I would suggest praying. If you're not, I still think you can pray and try and find and seek, but you can also just meditate if that's what you want to do. I think spending time in silence in your thoughts and praying or meditating is a very good, um, I guess they call it discipline to, to implement in your life. If you do this for 10 minutes a day, you're going to be great. I've been doing it for a very long time. The second thing you need to do is read for 20 minutes. Okay. So we're going to start empowering ourselves and reading books and other things. Um, you know, reading is huge. Uh, your first book you can read is the wealthy way. <laughs> I would suggest doing that. If you haven't read it yet, 20 minutes a day, go get the wealthy way book and read it. After that, 
you know, you can maybe go read Atomic Habits and these other books that I've been talking about for building better habits. But, uh, you know, I, I, I should really update that too. First book though, you got to read The Wealthy Way. I'm not going to force that requirement, but uh, definitely 20 minutes of reading per day. If you read 20 minutes a day, by the way, you'll read, I forgot the, what the statistic was, but you'll read about 30 books a year. So for the last five years, I've read over 30 books a year. And I, I really only read about 20 minutes a day. It's nothing crazy, but I'm able to absorb a lot of information from these books. Um, so I think reading 20 minutes a day is great. Third one is to work on a new stream of income for 30 minutes. Okay. Now this one's big. The reason I have so many businesses and streams of income is because I'm constantly working on new products, new businesses, acquisitions, other things. So when we talk about building a new stream of income for 30 minutes a day, it doesn't mean you got to get like a completely new business or a side hustle or something. It could be that for sure, but it could also mean making money in your current business in a new way, right? For example, let's just say you're a realtor. All right. And your, your current way of getting clients and leads is, I don't know, you just do referrals. Like you don't really do any kind of other marketing. Well, why not just go make social media content for 30 minutes a day and create this new source of leads for your business. Okay. That's what I would like to see you do. That's a new stream of income that you weren't tapping into getting into, you know, social media. Um, maybe you're going to go door knock for 30 minutes a day. Cause you're now going to, you're going to tap into that. Like that's a new stream. Um, maybe you have some other kind of company and you create an entirely new product line or a new service that you didn't have before. And so, you know, those services and products don't happen overnight. They take development. You've got to put time into building them out. Uh, that's what I do. So, you know, it, it can be within your current business. It could be like a new way that you're going to make money. It could be a new marketing channel, or it can be a completely different thing, right? You want to get a side hustle. You want to start wholesaling. You want to, um, start creating content as a, a new stream. Like there, there's lots of ways to do it, but pick a new stream, commit to it for 30 minutes a day. Okay. That's what it's going to take for it to, you know, gain some traction, start to become successful. And I mean, ideally you can go more than that, but that's the minimum, right? So already right there, that's an hour, right? 10 minutes of prayer, 20 minutes of reading, 30 minutes of working on a new stream of income. All right. The fourth one is to talk to somebody for 15 minutes a day. Now, this isn't just like talking with someone uh, <laughs> at your job. This is like a legit, hey, I'm going to call my mom, my dad, my sibling, my friend, whoever it else, and have a 15 minute conversation with them where you're just seeing how they're doing, right? It's just talking with somebody, building relationship, not calling them because you need something or you need a task done, but it's just like, yo, how you doing? How's life? How's the kids? You know, how can I help you? How can I serve you? Just reaching out and building relationship for 15 minutes a day. Texting someone's not good enough. DMing someone's not good enough. I want you to get on the phone and talk to somebody for 15 minutes a day. Okay. Watch how much that changes your relationships. Um, the next one is to exercise and stick to a diet for 45 minutes a day. So diet wise is obviously the whole day exercise 40 mi 45 minutes a day. All right. So I don't care what kind of workout you do. You want to go golf. You want to go lift weights. You want to go run a marathon. You want to go do CrossFit yoga. I don't care. Play basketball, just exercise for 45 minutes a day right? For me, my plan is going to be, I'm going to lift weights four times a week. I'm going to play golf once or twice a week. I'm going to do some cardio those other days. You know, I just actually, we, we moved into our new house and, um, I built a gym in it. And so now we got a treadmill and a bike and stuff. So it's going to be easier for me to just kind of like watch a YouTube video or a podcast or something and, you know, just do some cardio. So I'm excited about that. Um, but yeah, exercise for 45 minutes a day, whatever you want to do. Um, and then make sure you stick to a diet. And so once again, with diet, doesn't matter to me what you do, have a legit diet in place. If you say you're going to intermittent fast, do that. If you say you're going to eat under 2000 calories, do that. If you're going to say you're going to just have a certain amount of macros, stick to that. If you say that, you know, you're going to go bulk up and gain weight. Cool. Whatever, whatever diet you want to do, do it. Okay. And then lastly, Okay. Post yourself doing one of these activities 
with the hashtag WealthyWay60, okay? So this proves that you did it. It spreads the word of what you're doing and will get people interested in, you know, just establishing these habits because they're life-changing. And everything that you're, you know, experiencing is completely free. The app, the courses, like there's nothing, it's just all free. So, you know, the more people you tell about it, it's going to change lives. That's just one way to serve people. And that's it. That's the 60 day challenge. Okay. And for those who don't know, basically all six of those represent what I call the wealth acronym. Okay. And so this is how we set goals in the wealthy way. Um, and I'll just explain it real quick. The wealth acronym W first letter, right? Stands for worship. And so that's why we pray for 10 minutes a day. Um, E stands for education. That's why we read for 20 minutes a day. A stands for affluence. That's why we work on a new stream of income for 30 minutes a day. Um, L stands for lifestyle. Okay. Um, this happens to be, uh, with what's it called? Uh, the, the posting and the hashtags, because we want you to broadcast your lifestyle to other people and what you're doing. Um, T stands for team. So that's where talking with somebody for 15 minutes a day um, resonates. You know, team is like your relationships and everything else. And then H stands for health. And so that's where, you know, you exercise for 45 minutes a day and stay in your diet. So you're hitting every aspect of the wealth acronym with this challenge. It takes two hours a day. It's not that, you know, like you can dedicate two hours a day to doing this. Okay. And some of these things you're kind of already doing in your life. And so it's only adding a few more things. And here's what I can say. Okay. Number one, as I said, from the beginning, uh, this will change your life. If you do this for 60 days, your life is going to change. Okay. Number two, um, there's going to be a prize at the end. And so if you finish the 60 days, we're going to have an amazing prize. Um, you know, so you got to finish the 60 days. Um, look, I know some of you guys are going to catch this late and you're not going to start when I start. And so, uh, it's going to be a little late, but that's okay. Um, we are going to basically run this challenge all the way to my upcoming event, April 4th to the 6th. And so that is going to be the end of the challenge. Um, and you'll see, we're going to announce something very special at the event for those who finished the wealthy way 60. And so I think you basically have a couple of days of leeway, um, depending on when I start this, right? So, uh, I think you're going to have, you know, a few days to really, you know, if you mess up and miss a day, that's fine, but there's only a couple of days of leeway. So don't plan on it. Try and go 60 days. Perfect. Um, that that's obviously going to be the goal. But um, yeah, it, it's going to change your life. It's going to help a ton. You know, if you start this late, um, you know, it's all good. Like even if you don't win the prize, <laughs> it's going to change your life. But there's going to be lots of prizes that you guys are going to want. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited for this challenge. I think it's going to spread the word of the wealthy way a lot. Um, you know, it's on the honor system too. I trust all you guys. So really, like I said, the way we're tracking it is through the app. So I'll just log into the app every day and, you know, mark your wealthy way 60 challenge, hit confirm, and it's just going to keep tallying your days up. And that's how we're going to check, you know, come event time, like who, who's done it and, uh, announce winners and other cool perks and things. So, um, yeah, it's going to be really exciting. Uh, I'm excited about it. I'm going to personally be doing it with you. So you're going to see me on social media, going through this challenge and marking my days, day one, day two, day three, you know, all that stuff. And, you know, I think it's going to be great. I'm super excited about it. So, um, hopefully this inspires you. Hopefully you join me on the challenge. Make sure you download the app and, you know, we make this thing happen. So, um, we're going to officially be starting the challenge on Monday, January 30th. And so, yeah, let's make it happen. And, uh, it's going to be a good time. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that podcast. Thanks for making it to the end. The good news is I've got another one that I know you're going to like, and all you got to do is click it right here, linking it right here. All you got to do is just click it and you're going to see this new episode that you're going to love.